Hey everyone, my name is Sophie from Sophisticated Organization. Welcome back to my channel for another Sophisticated Saturday. And today I am starting to get some movement back in my life. We're starting off with a little bit of a postpartum workout. These are workout videos that I have done through pregnancy and postpartum now several times. The videos that I follow are from somebody that I found on Instagram. Her name is Kim Perry, and she has these great, great videos and workout plans, plus like nutritional information and stuff. So I really enjoyed using her videos so I can just kind of press play and not really think about it. You can see I have Henry with me in this little vibrating chair that is keeping him calm and asleep so I can keep an eye on him while I get in a little bit of movement. It's also been extremely nice and warm here in Nebraska. If you follow me on Instagram, you know I've been going for a lot more stroller walks. So I'm just starting to get the movement back in. But if I'm being completely honest, I am not feeling really back in my body yet or feeling totally comfortable in it, but I am still less than two months postpartum. So obviously that's completely normal and I'm just kind of taking it week by week, day by day, month by month, and just trying to eat healthy, get movement in, and take care of my baby during the day. Things are crazy on maternity leave. They're crazy with two kids now on the weekends. So you'll see I am talking on the phone. I was actually talking to my mom about a trip we're planning on coming to see her in April. And I think Disney on Ice is going to be touring where she lives in the winter in April and she thought it'd be kind of fun and I thought it'd be kind of fun to take Owen. So we were talking about planning that and talking about tickets and who would go and if Henry would come and all of that. So there is no excuse for me not working out. I could do it while I was watching the video and I was talking to my mom and taking care of Henry. I will admit it's a lot easier to focus on a workout when you're not on the phone, but I still wanted to keep moving no matter what because I didn't want to risk Henry waking up and missing that opportunity to get my movement in. I won't show you the entire workout, but I did finish it up and then took my shoes off so I could go upstairs and bake a little treat. I wanted to try this new banana bread. I've been trying to work through all of my recipes and and really refine my recipe binder. I will have a video coming out in a few weeks talking through my recipe binder and I'm trying to make templates. So if you're interested in creating your own recipe binder, you can use those as well. But with this refining process, there are gonna be so many fun recipes that I'm making. Whether you follow me on Instagram or subscribe to my newsletter and I email those out to you or you see them on Instagram or you're here on YouTube for Sophisticated Saturdays, I'm usually making a lot of different recipes so in a way, you'll be working through all of those recipes with me as well. And I'll make sure to share if it's something that makes the binder or not, because if it makes the binder, that means that it is something that we would look forward to making again and would be excited about and was really good rather than a recipe just being okay. I want it to be really the favorites and things that we look forward to having. The spin on this banana bread is that it's a tahini banana bread. So tahini is just kind of ground up sesame seeds, similar to a peanut butter or something, but it's sesame seeds. And I love the tahini flavor. It has like kind of a nutty flavor to it. And something else that was fun about this recipe was that it had a cut banana on top, which you'll see in just a little bit when I get to that stage of putting the banana bread into the loaf pan, which I thought was really pretty. So even if you don't like this tahini banana bread idea, don't like the recipe, don't wanna try the recipe, I would definitely make banana bread again by putting a sliced banana on top as an extra garnish. I love the squishy bananas in banana bread. So having extra banana on top makes it look pretty and it tastes delicious. Also, I was still a little bit short on time here. So the parchment paper situation in the loaf pan looks like an animal did it. I usually cut little slits to help make those beautiful corners a little bit better, but I will admit I just went for it really quickly so I could get that in the oven as fast as I could before Henry woke up.
with that in the oven, I am back downstairs. And a lot of today's sophisticated Saturday is downstairs because I had my workout down here. Now we had stuff all over the place and I wanted to get it cleaned up. We had our art cabinet here that needed a little bit of picking up. I just ordered a couple new shelves for this cabinet because when I used it in my first apartment, after law school. I didn't really have a closet in that apartment or a big closet, so I used it half for office storage and then half for shoes and sweaters and things like that. And I had a hanging rod in there and I had all these shoe shelves. I took the shoe shelves out, we got rid of those. I still have this large gap in the unit where I had hanging stuff. So there's lots of empty space in here. So I did order some new shelves, which should be coming soon. And I can do a little bit more reorganizing here, but the craft side here on the right does have a fair amount of shelves. So I can organize it pretty well. And these are crafts for kids. I have a few other craft items in my office because I personally do a lot of crafting, but this is more kids craft stuff like you're seeing crayons, construction paper. I've saved a couple of toilet paper rolls, pipe cleaners, stickers, felt, all of that stuff. I'm still trying to keep the felt in rainbow order, so I'm taking the time to put it all away properly, but with kids, as they start accessing crafts a little bit more on their own, I'm sure it's not gonna stay quite as organized as it does with me in control right now, but since I'm still in control, I'm gonna be in control and try and make it look aesthetically pleasing inside of that cabinet, and I can also find what I'm looking for a lot easier when it's organized that way. Okay, here is a lot more of the mess. I had a bunch of stuff that I had put on our bar when I was going through and decluttering. I was switching out bookshelves of Owen's in his room. So I need to put those seasonal bins away into the storage room. So you'll see I'm packing them up and putting them away. I have one for each season so I can switch out his bookshelf and then putting away everything else that is out on this countertop or at least as much as I can right now. This is part of the unit where I talked about where there's just kind of a gaping hole there. At the top of the screen, you can't really see. There is a bar, that's where I hung clothing. So it's just empty. So I got a couple more shelves to put in there, which I think will really help maximize the space because right now we are most definitely not utilizing it. These drawers, I have a lot of extra organizers. So as things rotate through the house and I change the way I'm organizing, I go there first. I kind of shop my stash before I would go purchase anything new. Then I've also decided I'm going to start hanging up more of Owen's old clothing in Henry's closet and getting it ready because I've started to buy some cute matching outfits for them and it just helps a lot to know what you already have so you don't go out and purchase things that aren't necessary. I think that about seasonal clothing in general. So even if you don't have kids and you can't totally relate 
to this or even you have older kids and you can't relate to this stage of life that I'm in, I think it's important to try and have as much of your clothing out in your closet and visible as possible rather than putting away seasonal storage just so you know what you have. You have the opportunity to declutter a lot easier when you're seeing it often. And like I mentioned, you don't go out and purchase things when you already have it. So even if it's winter and you've stored your summer stuff away and there's a sale and you see a cute dress, but maybe you forgot you had a dress that looks like it. If it was out and in the open, that could maybe be something that would help you avoid that situation. Banana bread is done. I gave you a quick little glimpse of it here and I'm going to pop it out of the parchment paper and the loaf pan and cut a slice because Jim was sitting on the couch and he was doing some work and he wanted to taste test it. Now that I've gotten all that stuff out of the basement, I am rearranging a little bit in Henry's closet, all of Owen's hand-me-downs. So I'm putting the stuff that fits Henry right now or the smaller size of shoes forward and then the bigger sizes of things that are hand-me-downs later in the back. His dresser is pretty full, so I haven't pulled out the bigger, bigger sizes of clothing. I think I have up to 12 months maybe in his dresser right now, but I have lots of extra space in the closet to hang items. So that's what I'm doing right now. I'm getting everything on hangers while Henry plays on the play mat. And it's so fun just looking back through all of this clothing and how cute it is and remembering Owen wearing all of it and looking forward to Henry wearing it as well. You'll see I had propped up for Henry his black and white book and I flipped him on his tummy so he could do some tummy time and he rolled over instantly. He has been rolling over, I'm telling you, since he was two weeks old. Again, if you're not a baby person, usually it's more around three months old that they start rolling. So I don't know what his deal is. Maybe he has super baby strength or something, but he loves to roll right out of that tummy time. So that is it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed and until next time, I will see you all later.